everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the MSI MPG A850G PCIe 5 power supply. MSI did send me this sample, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. 80 plus gold certified, ATX 3.0 compatible, PCIe 5.0 ready. What do we got in the backside? your cable lengths and a nice breakdown there of everything that's included with specs for the power supply unit. Letting you know it's got compact sizing, fan zero RPM mode, 100% Japanese capacitors, and everything else that we just mentioned. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature with our installation tip right here to make sure that it's fully seated and inserted. Next, you'll see main power cord right here for the power supply unit to the wall. Four screws. And then all of our different power cords and cables. Try to show you them all up close. Take a look at this one. So it's gonna be your new adapter into your PCIe, if you prefer. And then we have our lovely 600 watt cable here with the yellow tips. I really like the yellow tips for a couple of reasons. One is gonna be really easy to see to identify this cable in a wide array of other cables, but also because then you'll be able to tell if it's gonna be fully installed or not. So really nice that we got the yellow tips there. See some additional cables here. You got more cables for you. Legacy users out there. And our main board cable. Then you'll see we have a bag that the cables were included in for easy storage. And then lastly, we have the power supply unit. Let's look at that up close in more detail. First up, you'll see our fan through the grill right here with the MPG logo and branding and the silver stripe down the side. Moving right along, let's look at the side of our power supply unit. We do have a sticker here reminding us that zero fan mode means that the fan will not operate at low loads. So keep that in mind. You can press that button right there to activate it right on your power supply, toggle on and off, and you'll see our power connector right there. Moving right along on the side, we got the MPG logo and branding again with our dragon. Same thing on the other side. Take a look at this side of the unit. We have our tech specs here with additional branding. And now let's look at the back side here, fully modular, all of our different cable connection options right there for us. Now let's plug it in, power it on, and try it out. To install the power supply, I'm gonna go ahead, connect all the cables you see here to the unit itself, and then we'll work it in from the back, fasten it in place. We have our main wall power. We're gonna have two CPU cables here we're gonna use to connect both up there. We have our lone GPU cable, that's gonna be great. Very minimalistic on the front too, especially since we have this back connect design, so that'll be nice, just one cable up there. This is gonna be so we can power our LEDs and fans right there. And then we have our motherboard main cable right there. So now let me undo them and attach them here. Here's a look at all of our cables connected. SATA connector right here for our fans and RGB motherboard cable, two CPU cables and our GPU tucked away underneath. We have plenty of additional ports in the future if we ever want to add anything. That's what's nice about having your fully modular power supplies. Now we're just gonna gently work it in the back here and fasten it with the included screws with the power supply unit to the case. All right, now you'll see if I turn it over here, being careful not to damage any of our front panel glass, you'll see right there we have the power supply installed. Now it's time to plug in some cables. So we got quite the rat's nest going on back here, but we'll be able to get everything tidied up. First, we'll start with the power supply. This is so cool. This is my first time building with back connect. This is amazing. So we'll take this cable that you see right here. We'll just line it up and it'll go right in place on the back of our motherboard. This is way too cool. And I'll just gently snap right in. So there's our main power. We only have a couple more cables left. So we kind of just did it, you know, a light build with this. We have our two CPU cables right here. And for this build, we might see, I think we can go up through the main channel too. We have the option we could go this way as well, but they seem plenty long. We'll probably try for this side. And this is so nice. I usually have trouble with these cables. What a luxury. So I believe I want this one on that side and that one there. So theoretically we'll plug those 
right in. They'll snap right in. That's the easiest CPU cables I've ever plugged in. Okay, yeah, cool. That'll go right through there. That'll be great. And then really with this, we have two more cables, our GPU, and we have our basically the accessory power cable. And I kept this one tied, so maybe we could just kind of cram it in there. And that guy's just right down here. So we'll line that one up. Only fits one way, don't wanna break anything. So that one's now snapped in. We can kind of tuck that guy out of the way. And now we're gonna route our GPU cable for our power up through to the front to our GPU. So we got him up and out, and then we'll just gently line him up and press him in place. I love the yellow connector because all the yellow is hidden, so we know we have a nice firm connection. Now it's time for all the rest of the cable. So we're gonna start up at the top right here. This first one is going to be our pump, and we're gonna connect that to pump fan one, just like so. And then these two are gonna go, these are the two fans for that radiator. We're gonna connect those two our CPU fan one, and we'll use the included adapter that came with our AIO to connect those. Now we're moving further down in our rat's nest here. We're gonna connect our USB type C right there. The Velcro straps in the way, but that's okay. We'll just kind of push it out of the way a little bit. And then it'll just be nice and gentle, nice and snug. And then we have our USB 3.0 with a nice 90 degree connector right here. Perfect for this setup. Gently press that in place. And then you'll see we got our front panel connector right here. All of it in one piece, which is great. That's going to go in your JFP1 option. So easy. Love when they do that. And then we have, looks like HD audio. That's gonna be right here. Plug that in, there we go. And then we should have our fan cable hiding right here, that's what we got. Do we have room for this? We're gonna connect this to one of our open fan ports. So I see system fan two down here. That might be our best option if we can make it there. Let's do system fan two for that. And then do we have, what do we got here? We got some of our RGB as well too. So if we wanna connect that to our board, looks like we have two options right here. J A R G B V2 one, J A R G B V2 V2. So if we wanna use that with our motherboard software, we'll need to connect this to one of those. So let's do that right now. Ta-da, there we go. I believe that is every cable. Now, let's go ahead, let me snap my fingers and this will be all nice and tidy. Good enough to call it a day. Now let's go ahead, let's plug it in, power it on and try it out. Here's a close up of the power supply with the PC installed. On the front, you're only going to notice one cable that we're using. That's our GPU cable right there, just a single cable serving power to the RTX 3080 FE. Everything else will be connected on the back, thanks to our Project Zero motherboard. Here's a backside look. You'll see the power supply down here at the bottom. Toggle on and off switch and our Zero fan button. Interesting that it looks like it's upside down per se with how we installed the power supply with the fan facing down. That's how we wanted to do it. And then here's the back panel with the power supply installed, same thing. So our logo is upside down, but then our fan would be right side up and I wanted the fan down at the bottom. And if you can see in there, everything's labeled properly in the right side up. You can read the CPU and PCIe. So just interesting design there. Up to you, I guess, how you want to do it with your own build. That's the beauty of it. But all of our power supply connections are right back here. So main board power, then moving right along up. We got our two CPUs right there. You saw the GPU. And then we have our hub connected and that's tucked away 
in there. Came together really nicely. Now it's time to establish a baseline so we can stress this system out. So you'll notice at idle, our baseline is going to be 37 degrees Celsius for the CPU at about 25 watts. Our GPU about 29 degrees Celsius at 10 watts. Hardware monitor breaks down a couple more of those temperature values for you, depending on which value you're interested in. And then you'll see task manager just showing the utilization of the CPU and the GPU basically at 1%, as low as it can be in this idle state. Now let's go ahead, let's stress this thing out and see how warm it gets. We're encroaching on the 15 minute mark for our full stress test here. No issues at all to report back. All the thermals and temps are well within range and everything is working fine on the power supply. We're really stressing it out, putting the CPU and GPU under that full load. Everything as it should be. You'll see our voltages are looking fine on all the charts and diagrams. Nothing is out of the ordinary, very stable and reliable under this full load for 15 minutes. So right at the wall source, I wanted to show you under that full stress load, what you can expect right now we're consuming, let's just call it 560 watts, 0.751 kilowatt hours, 120.1 volts, and you'll see 4.693 amps. All right, with the thermal cam out, thought we'd take a look now and see how warm the build's getting when it's fully stressed. Now I did take the panels off, but as you'd expect, the GPU is gonna be the hottest and warmest thing, but seeing a lot of heat being dissipated all around the motherboard as well. Surprisingly, our cooler, as you would probably expect, is doing really well. Thought that might be a little bit warmer than it is. It's great to see. Doing an adequate job on the CPU. Go underneath the GPU, get a feel for some more of those measurements there. And you may have noticed the bearings on the case fans. A little bit warm in the center. Here's a look from the side, our hotspot down at the bottom for our GPU and our power supply, as expected. Here's the IO shield on the back side, not too shabby. And then here's a look at the back side. So a lot of heat from the motherboard on the back. That's where all of our headers are that we're connected to like our CPU up at the top, main board power down here. See that hot spot there. The rest of our cables at the bottom and the power supply. All right, so let me share with you my final thoughts after installing and using this MSI power supply. First thing I wanna say is installation, simple, straightforward, plug and play, fully modular, pick and choose the cables that you want to use. Also, we got some nice future proofing with our single GPU cable up to 600 watts. So love having that. The yellow is a super nice touch to make sure you know when it's fully seated and plugged into your graphics card and to the power supply unit itself. In regards to noise, haven't heard the power supply at all. Typically, if you're going to be running anything at any sort of max setting like we did, when I put my ear there, it's picking up the noise from the exhaust fans and our fans from our AIO, not the fan from the power supply itself. So the good news is there, if it is loud, it's not any louder than any of the other fans on your system. So I'd say it's gonna be very quiet. And even if it is being used, you'll have your other fans spinning up to block out any of that noise. We did not hear any coil whine or anything like that to report back to you guys either. So it's just a solid, steady, capable power supply that's ready for now, as well as some time in the future. Buy with confidence too, because it's got a fantastic warranty. So I expect it to last for years, if not decades to come.